Sivan is here. So with your stroke, one of the things that you can see is that you're trying to keep your arms uh, like mirror images. So as the as the left is entering, the right is finishing, and vice versa. Uh, I do is that there's a bit of a delay when you're finishing the stroke sometimes, meaning you're you're leaving your hand sort of hanging or dragging behind you. With swimming, you don't have to have your arms. Uh, mirror images of each other. You can extend and uh, glide with the uh, forward reaching arm while the other arm does a pull and then starts to recover. And the recovery is the uh, out of the water portion of the stroke. So working on that timing will help you. So what I'm trying to say is when you reach forward it's okay to keep that arm reach forward for a half a second or so. You can see what's going on right now is as you enter, you immediately start pulling back. And here you did eliminate the uh, the pause at the finish of the stroke. I think we, we spoke about it. So that's good. So you just need a little more pause at the front of the stroke. Body position is good. Your breathing is comfortable. Uh, and your head position is good, so all those are pretty good. The stroke timing, and then a bit of the underwater stuff that we'll talk about when we see that. Your kick looks like it's pretty strong. You wouldn't want to kick that hard for a mile swim, but for shorter events, it works. So <clears throat> on your right arm, your catch angle is actually not bad. Uh, the catch is where the arm is extended forward and then the hand and forearm start to angle down while your upper arm is still going forward or angled forward. It's known as early vertical forearm or high elbow catch. So you're able to get some of that with your right arm. Uh, a little bit less so with your left arm. Your left arm is doing more of what I classify as a straight arm pull meaning the angle of the forearm and the upper arm are mostly the same through the stroke. On some of these you're doing a enter and then a sort of hook down or a immediate catch down. That's good in the sense that it helps you learn how to get a proper catch but just recall the timing issue where I think you'd be better served by entering and then reaching forward or gliding slightly. <clears throat> so with the freeze frames, your hand may be entering the water a, just slightly too far in front of your head, but it wasn't major. Uh, and then you start to see the beginning of a catch angle here. So this is good. So right there, your hand and forearm are taking a different angle than your upper arm. <clears throat> and here, they are pretty much straight up and down. That's a that's a pretty good catch. Your hand is turned slightly out. Um, but that, that was a, a, a fairly good catch. With the push through, I'm not sure how much pushing is going on here as, as, as opposed to the arm just sort of drifting back once you get through the, the pull. So yeah, that's... This is the pause of the of the stroke that I was talking about at the finish. So you want to uh, push through and then bring your arm back around. So looking at your left arm here, so the angle of the forearm and upper arm are sort of one and the same. So that's a more of a straight arm style of, of swimming. Problem with this is that the first third of the stroke pushes water down as opposed to pull water back. So drills, if you recall, the one arm drill is really helpful. Uh, doing some fist drill, closing your hands in the fist could be helpful. Catch up drill will be good for you because you do want to slow down the beginning of your stroke. You want to stretch and glide a bit. Uh, and doggy paddle drill. Those are really the ones that will help you the most with the form. 
And then swimming regularly. That's uh, that always helps.